The Attack of Titan Season 4 Episode 10 Queen Historia is pregnant, but who is the father? So what's up guys, Fox in here. So much jam-packed into this episode. Who is the baby daddy for Historia? And are Eren's friends really gonna backstab him to take his titan? Really Armin? So Colossus smash that like, ring the bell, I pulled out 4am today. Episode 10 titled A Sound Argument. So it is official, you got Eren jailed up. From the last episode, so many enemy people seemed to be confused about why Eren got locked up. It really was simply that the guy fled over to Marley and then he used himself as a hostage, which forced the Sericors to come over to help. So yes, despite Eren acting in goodwill, he really did go against people in charge. By the way, anime Eren did get pepperoni. You truly are getting your money's worth. Not many anime guy characters get those. For the fight, fight line. This is not the first time that Eren has been talking to himself. Recall back to Eren in Attack of Titan Season 3. You found him doing something similar after the basement reveal. What a coincidence, also at the time being locked up. Eren had been mimicking the past attack Titan Kruger. So it seems Hanji is always the one noticing Eren doing stuff like this. For the new hairstyle, looks like even Hanji is drawn to the man bun Eren. Hey Eren, why are you sporting the Tyra sister lock? It really was no surprise to see Eren bursting out. I mean, I liked how Hanji was playing it, but you totally saw it coming. She really would be able to get on anyone's nerves. Anyway, getting to a major topic, sacrificing Historia. First off, the next flashback, two years ago. For Yelena here, by the way she's talking, it seems that this group has been busy elsewhere in the past year. You gotta love Daddy Levi being overprotective. You wanna talk to the Jaeger? You gotta go through me, bub. So adorable, everyone's towering over his ass. So a major takeaway here is that two years ago, the port had already been completed. Taking a look at the first guest on the Devil Island. Hey, it's Kiyomi, which is the lady from the Asian nation, which appeared for Willy's invitation, and also using an escape rope before the main event. As of now, Kiyomi does play a role as the ambassador to other nations. She does have strong ties to them, pretty similar to Willy. Not too long ago, you saw her in a kimono, so you can't think of this Asian nation as a stand-in for Japan in the Attack on Titan world. Hmm, so I noticed the anime just jumped into this. Let's get into it. The family crest, the apostoral logo. Pretty simple with the three swords, and it really just screams Japanese out too. So check out Mikasa's tattoo. Now that it's officially in the anime, here's predicting Mikasa fangirls are gonna get the same marking. Bonus points if you do it while drunk. So I was extremely curious to see how they would pull this off in the anime. Recall back to the Attack of Titan Season 1 anime. They actually replaced Mikasa having this branding for some family stitching design. Not to mention both the anime and official art really having cared about covering Mikasa's arm. So about Hizuru, you're suddenly finding out the Shogun of this nation was buddy buddy with the Eldian Empire. I guess the Eldian King must have been a secret weeb. The royal family, aka the race family that Historia is a part of, used to hang out with Mikasa's family in the past. Which does bring into question some past Titan history. Recall Marley's probo about the Marley Empire being so awful that they hugged and played colonizer. Yet right here you have info about them being friendly with Otherworld Japan. I'm betting they weren't the only ones. This piece right here is giving you a fuzzy Titan history detail that this Asian nation sided with the king during the Great Titan War, and then they lost power when Marley became the new world power. I guess Mikasa's ancestors were already on Paradise Island when the walls went up? Whoops. And that is how Mikasa ended up being the last Asian on Earth, or should I say recently updated, on the island. So how do you like all of this? Especially for Mikasa fans. Mikasa now has a strong connection to this foreign nation, her being a descendant of this nation's leader. My personal thoughts on this? Pretty much the same as they were in the manga. Even watching this playing out in the anime feels a bit forced. As if Mikasa being an Ackerman wasn't already special enough. You gotta say I'm introducing this for her. Who's gonna be that special someone next time? Watch someone else be secretly connected to a random ass nation that could help them. Hey Kony, let's check your family tree. The one detail I did like was Mikasa seeming super uncomfortable with the whole thing. It was great to see everyone being super anxious and cautious, rightfully so. What's a nation, guys? I could just hear Sasha asking, can I eat at a nation? As always, you gotta love the old drunk dude Pixies playing the voice of reason. He perfectly understands how ignorant they are in this world. It actually reminded me of Captain Broccoli taking charge of the underworld after the goddesses came into the picture. Ooh, Mikasa. Why did you only show Eren your special place? Perfect, now the two girls could have a sleepover. They could talk about this all night, about them being from royalty. But what a surprise, Mikasa actually being embarrassed at least a little bit. As for Eren, what a difference back then. So happy, so full of hope, almost looking like Armin. 
Anyway, back to Kiyomi. Interesting how she brings up how Zeke dangled Mikasa in front of her. It almost seemed like she would have never even come to the meetup if Mikasa was never part of the equation. As for the 3D maneuver gear, recall Attack on Titan Season 2. That 3D maneuver gear that the Beast Titan Jack from humanity's second strongest. I love little details like this coming back. So get this, you got Zeke introducing the special Iceberg Stone into the Attack on Titan story. The secret field that powers the gravity-defying Titan machine killers. Although you should notice, originally the Iceberg Stone was introduced in the Attack on Titan prequel. Zeke claims there's a bunch of this Iceberg Stone underground at Paradise Island. And for manga readers, a good chunk of detail removed in this flashback. I will bring that up in the manga comparison video. So you're telling us Paradise Island is rich of this natural, untapped resource? Say no more! It would make it very easy to bribe. I mean collab when there's money involved. Come on, Granny Kiyomi makes it so obvious with that tongue action. Something just got moist. I do like Mikasa picking up on this obvious giveaway. Oh dear, we care so much about you. Would you mind showing us around the island? As for Zeke, you have a secret plan being mentioned. I thought some of the details from the previous episode might have been moved here, but nope. This episode cut out even more Zeke chunks. It's almost as if Levi carved this up. Anyway, for the actual three goals or three points. First off, the rumbling demo. Gotta show the world your colossal nukes. It's all about sending a message. How you display your colossal titans is gonna be interesting. Two, establish Paradise Island as a legal nation. Right now, this double island is so far behind time. The enemy skipped it, but it's about 100 years behind. And three, for Zeke to pass down the Beast Titan to a Royal Blood member. Historia, I choose you. How does becoming a baby making machine sound? So you would have the Royal Blood family making kids and passing down their Titan. Doesn't that sound awfully familiar? It looks like history is repeating itself, this time with Hanji and the Scouts in power. I like them including this flashback, but why is Pixies a Titan? Oh yes, Historia is not backing down. She does have the ovaries to sacrifice herself for her people. For Eren, he seems to be the guy strictly against it. The only one here? Let's consider every other option first. How very Armin of you, Eren. But unfortunately, you have the harsh reality back in present day. They found no other options. Wanna know why Eren held himself as hostage? You got it. Eren just gave Paradise Island another option by stealing the Warhammer Titan. This was probably one of my favorite scenes and lines. You aren't holding Eren in jail. Eren is simply allowing it for the moment. But get a look at this, Eren busting out the Titan markings as a human. Dude was about to go Titan mode on Hanji. Holy crap. It's Eren Jaeger, breaker of buildings. It feels like Hanji awkwardly and dumbly try to play it off. This is the situation they're at. I feel bad for her, but I do like her acknowledging the loss of Erwin. It shows not only how underqualified she is for this leader position, but also that Erwin clearly left a gaping hole with his passing. Are we getting into it? Historia pregnant. I guess two years later, this is the result. How do you like this turn of events for Historia's situation? In the flashback, you did see Historia agreeing to becoming this baby-making machine for her people. Interesting enough, I thought this would have been a cliffhanger. As for the mid-info card, really more stuff about this new Eastern nation. Something to focus on here that wasn't mentioned in the episode is about them having engineers plus that aircraft development. Getting to the people in charge drunk on wine. Oh yes, let the truth spill out. To be fair, a lot of what was discussed here shouldn't be a surprise. These guys don't trust Zeke, which is why they would want to go with the more secure option as soon as possible. Just let the blonde queen eat the monkey. For the more stomach-turning discussion, so yes, this asshole clearly never liked Historia. What's up with that low-class BS talk? How about we make you into a titan? So you got these guys claiming the baby daddy is a farmer kid. For long-term watchers, it is very interesting to notice this scene coming back, despite the season 3 anime skipping it. A takeaway here is that supposedly Historia decided on this, not the farmer dude. Then for the interesting conspiracy talk. Did Historia get pregnant to avoid these higher up bastards from making her into a titan? Any plans to speed this up have been ruined, now they gotta wait till she gives birth. Although honestly, by the way this drunk dude is speaking, if they really wanted to, Historia being knocked up wouldn't slow them down one bit. Here's an idea, want some royal blood babies? Just have Zeke make it rain. Bet you Yelena would be first in line for that shower. Hey Niccolo, not looking sus at all. Next up, another flashback. Getting to Eren and friends, going from fighting titans to hard labor. Being an adult sure sucks. Did you notice, you gotta love Mikasa just casually lifting freaking steel, no problem. Not even breaking a sweat. Forget about the royal blood, make more Ackerman. 
Come on, you slackers. During construction, there's always some people taking it easy. But holy crap, Kony, you got huge. Everyone is towering over Uncle Levi. Getting to Hanji and the truth of the world. Turns out their only allied nation wants to keep this gold mine to themselves, which kills off any negotiation with other potential allies. Damn you, Isekai Japan. Mikasa, can you talk to your grandma? To make matters worse, you got the claim of the world being united in their hatred of this island. They really have been a scapegoat for decades. Humanity fears what they don't know. I mean, does this place even count as a third world place? Technically, they're not even recognized as a nation yet. At least Hanji was so optimistic. Let's do what the scouts have always done. So next plan of attack, just invade Marley. No biggie. As always, Sasha had food on the brain. What was that about real Marley and cuisine? I could just hear Niccolo crying. Jean right here is looking more and more like Kenny. Then for Eren making it awkward. Five years left, guys. Who wants my Titan? I'll take it. You're mine. As expected of Mikasa. So who really would be the best for Eren's hand-me-down Titan? Out of anyone here, honestly, Jean might be the best option. Kony does feel like he's more expendable, but he might suck as the next attack Titan. For that Potato Girl, Sasha, and Kony moment, I feel like they were having the equivalent of a stare-off, but for dumbasses. Who's more Baka now? Aw, Eren. You guys are my special buddies. You can't have it. Alright, time to call up Flock. <laughs> All of these guys got that anime blush going on. Did they just take a half a shot off screen? Aw, Mikasa looks adorable here. So happy Valentine's Day, guys. Eren and Mikasa Shipper just did get a little nugget here. Take your pick, waifu Mikasa or man bun Eren. Anyway, switching back to present day. So you had Eren that was so against Zeke, but in present day, he did side with his Onichan. But why? Let me just mention, more flashbacks are coming. For Kony, he's already back to deciding who should take Eren's founding titan. Of course, as always, Mikasa would side with Eren. Kony, you really are poking Mama Bear right now. So let's get into it, Kony bringing up Eren's laugh. I really do think the anime made it much more clear how Eren was freaking pissed off that Sasha died. Really, someone should have talked to Kony about that. Especially someone who was right there, like the stallion. Even Mikasa, why are you not protecting your crush? You were there to see Eren laugh, cry, right after Uncle Hannes became Titan Lunch. You could have totally said something. So way to drop the ball. At the end here, it looks like you have a little bit of a twist. Even Armin is on board with possibly switching over their great Titan. They got the Titan syringes now. Oh no, a full moon. I like how everyone else is drinking around Zeke. Probably not Levi. So let me know, how did you like this episode? There was so much to unpack here. Are you enjoying the trip down memory lane? Two flashbacks this episode, and more are coming. I do feel like the anime is making them more digestible, and they feel less confusing with the time jumps. How do you feel about Eren being locked up? It's been what, like an episode or two? And you already have Kony and Armin considering who should replace Eren. Friends, am I right? But if someone should replace Eren, who should get the honors of being the next Titan? I know a certain Jaeger and Ackerman who wouldn't like that discussion. If you're enemy only, do you side with Team Eren over the attack on Marley? Anyone have any mixed feelings over the buddies on each other's necks? Then for a different heated topic, Historia being knocked up. How do you like history repeating itself? Who do you think is the baby daddy? I don't know if the anime made it clear that who the father is isn't too clear at this point. Perhaps the next episode may change that. Overall for this episode, they definitely picked up the pacing. If you're anime only, how do you feel about that? Anything confusing, too much jumping around. And if you're a manga reader, how do you like the change-ups or cuts? I do like the episode overall despite feeling various scenes sped up. That said, I did notice a fair amount of dialogue and details cut out to move things along. I'll be going over this stuff in the next manga comparison video. Episode 9 for the anime vs manga is now up. And definitely check out my new video on The Promised Neverland Season 2. They just skipped a bunch of arcs. It'd be like Attack of Titan jumping from the female Titan fight over to Willy declaring war. It's such a mess. Anyway, post your thoughts in the episode below or just say hi. Are you Team Eren or Team Armin who wants his Titan? Don't forget to subscribe and do ring the bell. Check out the mess going on in The Promised Neverland. I am working on some other juicy videos and I'll see you guys later.